Hello folks, in this video I'm going to backtest a MACD trading strategy. This website here describes a couple of different MACD strategies with some examples, so I'll link this if you want to get some more info. You can see the indicator in this screenshot here. It consists of a MACD line, this blue line here, a signal line, which is the red one, and the histogram. Now, the rules for the system are quite straightforward. Whenever the MACD line crosses above the signal line, that's an indication to buy, and when it crosses back below, that's an indication to sell. So you can see here, it would have bought somewhere around this candle here, and then you would have had to sell somewhere around here. Now, when it's got so few rules, it's quite straightforward to backtest in Python. I've already created the notebook for this, so I'm just going to go through it cell by cell and explain what I'm doing in each one. First of all, I import my modules. The uh, main one I need is pandas, so that I, I can access the data and save it in a data frame. Then I define my date range of 20 years and a starting balance, which just gives me something to track as I run the systems uh, and I compare the balances. Next, I download the S&P 500 data. So this outputs just the last five cells for it. And I can see that I've got the high, low, open, close, volume and adjusted close. So it looks like the data is downloaded correctly, but I don't actually need all of these columns. The MACD only needs the close price. So I can drop all of the additional ones here. Now that I've run that cell, I'm left with just my prices and the close price for each of those days. Now I can plot that to see how it looks and whether it resembles the S&P 500, and it does. So I can see that the data has been downloaded and stored correctly. Next, I can tr start extracting some information from this. Now the first thing I want to know is what the daily return of the S&P 500 is. How much is it changing day by day? And that is calculated by taking today's close price and dividing it by yesterday's close price. So when I have my daily return, I can calculate the running balance. So if I started with that 10,000 starting balance on day one, and I bought it there, how much am I going to have as this S&P 500 goes up and down? So that's what this bench balance calculates. If I run this cell now, I can see here, I've got the starting five and the finishing five values in my data frame. It's, it hides all the stuff in the middle. And you can see it starts off with 10,000 as my benchmark balance on the first day. Uh, drops off a bit and then at the very end of this data frame you can see it's uh, gone up to about 22,000 which ties in because the value has gone from about 1500 to just over 3000 so it's essentially it's doubled in value and that's what's happened to the balance it's gone up uh, just over double so I know that that section is working correctly as well but apart from just looking at how much it's increased I also want to know how much it's dropped in the meantime and that's what this drawdown calculation does here. It looks at what the peak balance is at any time, and then it compares the current balance against that peak to see how much it's dropped, and it calculates the maximum drawdown. So this shows that the worst drawdown was 56.78%. So over half of the value was dropped at some point. Uh, most likely it was somewhere around here, and that's a very significant drop to sit through if you were just buying and holding that S&P 500 for that whole time. So now that I've got the benchmark set up, I can start actually calculating the MACD and try to start simulating it. Now the MACD itself is essentially just a combination of exponential moving averages. So first of all, there are a couple of moving averages that you calculate, and they are based on a 12-day and a 26-day period. So that's what I've done here. I've calculated two exponential moving averages from the close price for those two periods. Now, these are the default settings for the MACD indicator. They can be changed, but this is kind of the default if you were to open up a charting package and drop this indicator onto it. This is most likely what you would get, so that's why I've stuck with these numbers. So when you've got those two exponential moving averages, the MACD line is just the difference between the two of them. And then finally, the signal line is the exponential moving average of the MACD line. So it gets a little bit confusing at this point, but essentially this is how the moving average, or sorry, the MACD indicator is calculated. So when I've done this, it won't output anything, but I will have calculated the MACD and the signal line in the background. So now I can output them so that I can show them in the same way as I did in that screenshot. If I run this code here, you can see that I've got my price data up here, and then I've got the MACD indicator below it. But because I've got so much data, this is 20 years worth of close prices, it's all just bunched together way too much so you can't actually see what's going on. So just temporarily, what I can do is just change this to one year's worth of data. If I come back down and just simply rerun all the cells above, 
I should only have one year's worth of data. So now you can see it a little bit clearer. You can see the green line is the signal line and the orange line or the yellow line is the MACD line. So whenever it crosses, for example, here, that would be a sell signal. So you'd be out of the market for that section here. Uh, and similarly here, for example, you would buy at this point. So you would enter just before this run up here and then you would exit again when it crosses. So you would be out for most of this drop here. So on the face of it, this seems like it could be a viable strategy. So I'm going to revert that back to 20 years. Now that I can see that the, uh, the calculations are correct and rerun this code and then continue from there. Okay, so the next thing to do is work out when my trading signals are going to put me into a buy situation. So when I spoke about the, the rules of the system, you go along whenever the MACD line is above the signal line. So essentially anytime it crosses and stays above it, that's when you buy and you don't sell again until it crosses back below. So that's quite easy to work out. I can just create a new column within my data frame called long, and this houses all of my long signals. And it's going to be a true or false value. So whenever the MACD is above the signal line, it will be a true value indicating that I should be in the market at that point. So that's what this is showing here now. So towards the end of this data frame, you would be long in the market at that point. So now that I've got these, I can calculate the same way as I did for my benchmark return and balance, I can calculate that for the system because the system is going to be exactly the same as the benchmark return because it just follows the S&P, but it's only going to be taking those values when I have a long signal. So whenever the system tells me to go long, then I buy and then I just track the returns of the S&P. But whenever the system tells me to come out of the market, so this long value is false, then I just take a return of one, meaning that it's not going up and it's not going down. Finally, when the system returns being calculated, I can just generate the system running balance from those returns. So if I run this now, I can now compare the data frame. Again, this is showing the first five and then the last five values. And I've got my benchmark balance and the system balance. So you can see they both start off on 10,000 and there are no signals, first of all, for a while. So it just stays on 10,000. But you can see that towards the end, actually, the benchmark finishes about 22,000 but the system balance is just shy of 14,000. So it's actually underperformed just a simple buy and hold. But of course, remember there was a significant drawdown within the buy and hold strategy. So potentially it's possible that the MACD keeps the drawdown low, which may redeem the system a bit. So that's what I calculate here. I work out this, the drawdown just the same way I did for the balance, uh, for the benchmark, I calculated the drawdown for the system. And that's telling me that the drawdown here is 35%. So not quite as bad as the 56% that's on the buy and hold strategy, but still quite significant. Lastly, to be able to compare all these metrics side by side, this section basically just calculates the annualized return as well as the drawdowns. And this will let me just see a, a quick snapshot of how they compare. And you can see that the benchmark, which is just a buy and hold, significantly outperforms the system uh, in terms of returns and the drawdown although it's worse it's not like there's a massive improvement with MACD you do still have to suffer quite significant drawdowns uh, for arguably not that great a return so let's visualize this by plotting both of the balances on top of each other to see what's going on and you can see here blue line is the S&P 500 essentially because you're just buying and holding the value of it is going up the same way as the price chart so you can see how that compares against the system here, which is when you're following the MACD indicator, it completely outperforms it. So that's a pretty disappointing result for uh, a system that's been around for a long time and is very popular and well known. Uh, so I thought perhaps the S&P 500 is just not a good uh, candidate for that system. So what I did was create a list of symbols so it still includes the S&P 500, but I also included Dow Jones and a few others just to get a comparison and see how it performs over other markets. Now this function, oh, I better run that code. Uh, this function here, it looks like a lot of code, but basically all I've done is just copied all of the information from above and just put them all together in one function. So this is going to allow me to test each of these symbols individually, but the code here, I don't really need to explain because it's just what I've gone over already. So I'll create this function 
And now I can iterate through all of those symbols within that list. I can run all of this backtest on each one of them, and then I will return their annual return for the benchmark and for the system. So it will take a few seconds to run this because now it's having to download 20 years of data for each of those symbols, backtest it, and now it's done. So finally, I can output all of those on a bar chart side by side to give me a quick overview of how it's performed. So what this is showing here, uh, blue is the benchmark, which is just buying and holding, and green is the system. So the S&P 500, I already knew that it does not outperform, and in fact, it's significantly worse. But you can also see that the pattern seems to hold true for a lot of the other symbols. So it does seem like the strategy uh, although it's very popular, very well known, and comes with pretty much every charting package, and there's plenty of uh, plenty of information online, it doesn't seem to perform very well at all. Simply buying and holding outperforms it almost every time on the, on these back tests. So overall, a disappointing result, and it kind of shows that this MACD strategy actually isn't a very good one at all. But I hope this video explained a little bit more about how to backtest these things and how to run this kind of simulation in Python. So thanks for watching.